Hello everyone, MP here bringing you another RenPy tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about persistent data. And persistent data is kind of special in that it's variables and values that you save across playthroughs. So you can use it to make like a new game plus, for instance, or to make it so that you somebody has to play through to a certain point before they unlock something you know you know things like that so i'm going to show you a few examples of something we can do i have a brand new project here and i'm going to create a new file and i'm going to call it fake gallery so in this fake gallery, I'm going to create a screen. I say tag menu use navigation. And this is basically um, using the navigation screen. for this navigation screen right here. And this navigation screen is actually something we need to to uh, you to alter in order to use our persistent data. So let's say here here's our fake gallery again and then Let's say after preferences, we'll say if persistent dot gallery unlocked text button gallery action show menu take gallery so at the very beginning persistent dot gallery unlocked is going to be undefined uh, but we have this special case here which says persistent object in special is special in that an access to an undefined field will have a none value rather than causing an exception So we can get away with this. So next up, let's run it. Oh, and I probably should put a colon there. Ah, what did I do? There we go. Sometimes Sublime is too smart for me. Notice that we don't have the fake gallery option here. We just go through the game and there it goes away. But if I put in the script down at the end, persistent dot gallery unlock equals true then if we go through it again now we have the fake gallery as an option so you can use this to do a real gallery, and that's actually a question I got before, uh, which prompted me to make this video. So, oh, I should probably, there we go, there's my problem. Fake gallery, there we go.
There we go. And so another thing you can use it for is to have a new game plus. So you can say, let's say that we say if persistent dot ng plus Eileen will say welcome to your new game plus else Eileen will say Welcome to your new game. And then I will use at the very end, I will say persistent dot ng plus equals true. Now you can use this to save things like stats and so forth, but if you want to save custom object, custom classes, um, you need to use Python early blocks and the classes need to be pickleable, pickleable, and implement equality. So if you don't really know what that means, I wouldn't do it yet. Anyway, so, but you can store stats and things like that. So let's try this again. Well, Eileen says, welcome to your new game. If we start again, Eileen says, welcome to your new game plus. Now, another thing I'd like to show you is a way to make an updating a screen that will update based on you having reached a certain point in the game. So what I'm going to do is start off with an init block up, up here. Init. I'm going to say if not persistent dot journal. So we're going to keep a journal. Then we'll say persistent dot journal equals an empty list. So that's just making it so that if it doesn't exist already, it'll make it exist. And then we can create another new file. And save that as game. Journal.rpy. And we'll say in it Python because if you add something to a persistent list, you can and, and you add it every single time you go through the game and reach a certain part of it, then you're gonna have it in there multiple times. And that's probably not what you want. So I'm going to add, make this function def add to journal. Oops. If I'm going to take an item, if item not in persistent dot journal persistent dot journal dot append item and that's it for that part and then I'm gonna make a screen journal and I'm gonna say tag menu use game menu journal Scroll equals viewport. 
And this is just saying, um, I'm using a screen that is giving me a viewport, basically, and setting up all the, I'm, I'm using the game menu screen, which is down here. And so it takes a scroll that if it's a viewport, then it'll make it everything in a viewport and basically make it so that we can have have everything we need all there because it's got the navigation, it's got that the setup, the background, all sorts of stuff like that. So I'm gonna just use that as a shortcut. So I'm gonna say VBox spacing 10 for item in persistent dot journal text item. And then so in the script, in order to add something to the journal, we're gonna say, we're gonna make a menu. Which way will you go? Path A. You chose path A. I hope you don't regret it. And I'll say Add to journal you went down path A. And then for path B, I'll say you chose path path B. I wonder if it's better than A. Add to journal. I should probably spell that right over here. Went down path B. And then we'll say, either way you reached your destination. So if I launch this, probably should add the journal to the screens, to the navigation screen too. Let's put this under the fake gallery. text button, journal, action, show, menu, journal, lowercase, there we go. And if we run this, and we take a look at the journal. It's got everything all set up for us, but it doesn't have any content. So if we start, welcome to your new game plus, we're gonna choose, let's choose path A, why not? Now, if we look in the journal, it's gonna say you went down path A. Now, if we do this again, if we do path A again, and we look at the journal, it's only in there once. So that was the whole point of this right here, add to journal. So now if I choose path B and I look at the journal, it shows them both. Now you may have noticed that this will actually show things in the, same, in the correct order that you chose them in. So that could be very useful for keeping track of what 
when people have done things or something like that. If, for instance, you want to make a history screen sort of thing that keeps all the information about what a player has done, so like a log screen or something. Or if you want to have a gallery codex that adds to itself once you've unlocked a certain amount of content, then you can do something like that and it would retain the order in which you've unlocked things. So yeah, that's I, I think that's pretty interesting. So I like it. And um, that's all sorts of things you can do with persistent data. I hope you guys found the tutorial helpful and I hope to see you next time.